My wife says that I don't understand her. She says that I'm not saying the right things. She can't feel in my heart. Maybe she hasn't felt connected to me for years, she may be saying at this point. Today, we're going to get into a new series that Cynthia and I are doing entitled Say This. <laughs> say, say This. And today, we're highlighting this saying, tell me the truth. Am I responding in the way you need me to right now? Now, don't just go off and start shooting these sayings at your wife, okay? There's three keys that I'm going to teach you that Cynthia and I will teach you by the end of this call that you need to have in mind and embodied before you say any of these quotes to your woman, with your woman in an attempt to open her. It's important that you do your own self-work first, and I'll teach that by the end of this call, so make sure you watch to the end. Welcome to the C-Note Show with myself and Miss Cynthia Cruz. We're here to teach how to love and lead with mojo like a king in long-term monogamous relationship between a man and a woman, because she wants safety, inspiration, and sexual leadership, and you want to avoid big mistakes, you want to avoid pitfalls before you stumble into them, or you want to solve problems that have uh, already come up. Maybe they've been festering for years, she may say. And so today we're going to get into, say this, tell me the truth. Am I responding in the way you need me to right now? Before I dive into this, it's been a couple of years since I've shown, it's not about the nail. We've <laughs> seen these in different places. Maybe you've seen this, maybe you have not, but this is very pertinent for today. It's a minute and 41 second video. So we're going to go ahead and watch. It's not about the nail. It's just, there's all this pressure, you know? And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me and I can just feel it, like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless. And I don't know if it's gonna stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most is that I don't know if it's ever gonna stop. Yeah, well, you do have a nail in your head. It is not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there. Stop would... trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing. You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. No, see, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail See, out. you're not even listening now. Okay, fine. I will listen. Fine. It's just sometimes it's like there's this achy, I don't know what it is. And I'm not sleeping very well at all. And all my sweaters are snagged. I mean, all of them. <laughs> that sounds really hard. It's. Thank you. Come on. Ow. If you would just. Don't. Try to see things my way. Do I have you got to love it. That video has over 24 million views. It was put on YouTube 10 years ago. So pertinent. So phenomenal. All right. Let's take a step. Let's take a step forward. But before we do, Cynthia, why is it not about the nail? What's what was that was amusing? What if that was it was amusing to you? I heard you laughing throughout. How do you like that? I just watched the the gentleman's face and the the pain on his face of why can't we just fix this? And then I can feel on the other side for the feminine that even though that feels like a very logical thing, the layers of emotion underneath are really the things calling to be heard. And even myself as a woman, I can experience how you can become really angry, frustrated, irritated, and in need when you feel like those layers aren't getting air, whether you're not expressing them or there's not a space to express them. So talk about the layers with us for a minute. How do you mean the layers that are underneath? Yeah, I mean, so many of those layers have to do with this very feminine core need to be to be seen, to be heard, and to be understood. And if if I was to say that there was a heroine's journey for for women in this life, it's to it's for her to learn how to show up to experience experience those things and without that without her showing up for that without her asking for that without her even allowing that in partnership she can be really get really resentful and then really blaming that she's not feeling heard or understood this is good so let's take a step back you just jumped to she has to show up to be seen and heard and understood but she may not be ready for that say more about that she may not, I mean, it even may be even more vulnerable for her to experience that in high caliber relationship than to sometimes it's even more protective and 
she feels like she has a power stance if she can blame the relationship that it's not there versus actually opening to the vulnerability of being seen and heard and understood. And I've seen this happen in women a lot when I coach couples. They'll come with that yearning. They'll be sitting next to their husband. He's seen and really inviting her. And all of a sudden she becomes very vulnerable and almost like she can't even take a deep breath in to allow in what she's being given and offered in that moment. Yeah, good. Thank you. So why would you say that is? He's attempting to show up. They have an old pattern from the past. There's wounds from the past, whether it's her side, his side, both. And he's attempting to be more aware, be more conscious, show up for her, be present for her, not judge. Yeah. And something in her blocks that gets in the way. She still wants to be in the old pattern for whatever reason, power reasons, safety reasons. What would you add to that? Yeah, I mean, even deeper, you know, I hear women who are very much in the, like they, in the industry of being seen, they're out giving talks, they're leading groups of people. They'll say they love being seen and they hate being seen. And so beneath that core desire is also the fear that if she is fully seen, she's fully understood for who she is, that it won't be enough that it won't be good enough, that there maybe there's something inherently wrong with her. And so to take the power stance of either projecting out, you're not giving me what I'm needing, or I'm an untouchable, like you can't see all of me is a way for her to protect that very small, maybe very young piece that worries beneath all of this, beneath all the demand and the, I'm not getting what I need. It is a realization that maybe I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. And if truly seen, I won't be wanted by the tribe. That's incredibly well said. So we all have insecurities, of course, we all have our childhood stuff, but to offer a, a teaser for one of the pieces that I'm going to show toward the end of this call is what's the soul What's the soul of why you're doing what you're doing? So what's the soul of why you're saying what you're saying? If the soul is to try to move toward perfection, that's an impossible goal. And you're going to flare up her fear. You're going to flare up, well, both of your insecurity, but her fear that the goal is to try to move toward perfection. So if you're attempting to open her and she feels like your goal is perfection to try to fix this, even though you're trying to say the right things, then what? If I'm really trying to get you to be perfect because that's some ultimate Everest goal that I have in my mind or in my heart, what does that feel like if I'm trying to get her to perfection? Oh gosh, that can feel like so much pressure in her body. Just like if, if she's trying to project on you that you need to be perfect, it will feel like something she either needs to drastically rebel against or she will crumple under or the the resentment may even build because she might feel that the request of her to be perfect is meeting an, a, a need that maybe you have as well. And she will, she will not like that. The feminine, as much as she might be good at masculine shielding, the feminine hates perfection and wants to have the ability to have soul and to change with the seasons and have seasonal life and shift through the month. And uh, if she herself is also trying to reach perfection, the top of the mountain all the time, those are the type of women who burn out so quickly because that pursuit of perfection for her is, is soul killing. Yeah, thank you. That's well said. So let's step forward. This book, Talk to Me Like I'm Someone You Love, was actually recommended to me. I'm about halfway through it myself. I skimmed through the entire thing and I'm studying it page by page at this point and I'm about halfway through. It's a phenomenal book. But again, do not just grab this. There's, there's sayings within this book, some of which we're going to highlight, one of which we're highlighting today, which is telling me the truth. Am I responding in the way you need me to right now? But don't just fire off this book, okay? You're going to need at least the three core concepts that I'm going to highlight here in a moment. But before we get into that, the three core concepts, I'm going to read you a story, quick story from the book. 
This is from page uh, 192, 193 in this book. Talk to me like I'm someone you love. Betsy was trying to tell her husband, Ned, that a few evenings ago when she was in a lousy mood, she just needed some space to complain about how miserable she was. Her colleague at work was in a serious car accident, adding to her workload. She was unsettled because her older sister wasn't returning her emails, and she wished Ned, her husband, would bring in his snack dishes from the den into the kitchen. The point Betsy was making about all of this was that it annoyed her that Ned's way of responding to her distress was to become her assertiveness coach. Okay. Oh, I know what's going to fix her. Let's become her assertiveness coach. Ned made an effective case that Betsy's work problem was exactly the same problem she was having with her sister, not to mention her ex-husband, her chronic inability to set boundaries. And he wanted to role play with her standing up for herself. This, this feels really good, Cynthia. This is feeling very attractive. Finally, Betsy, who, to be honest, does have boundary issues, including with Ned. She felt stymied. They both felt that something was off. So how did, how did Ned feel that something was off is a bit of a different but related topic. So we can talk about that if we have time on this call. How do you feel that something was off? So I'll make a little note there. To Ned's credit, he asked, tell me the truth. Am I responding in the way you need me to right now? Betsy said, no, you aren't. And Ned said, tell me more. She said, I would have felt loved if you had just said, it makes sense to me that you felt unsupported by me Thursday night. And then Ned hit a home run when he said, it makes sense to me that you felt unsupported Thursday night. And it makes sense that you felt unmet by me a few minutes ago when you were trying to tell me about it. So it's not about the nail. So Cynthia, what about this? What about him being her assertiveness coach is not what she wanted or needed or felt seen or heard? Well, he's seeing a problem. She needs, if she would fix this problem, everything would be better. We can move more toward perfection. Why, <laughs> why isn't that a great idea in this moment? Yeah, I think just like I hear men so much wanting women to understand their, their values, their nuts as men and to respect that. And I think that's a really big learning curve for women because their values, and I would say their ways of hooking into what's important in life is just construed different. So especially these, these dynamics at work or that involve other people, her concept of boundaries and assertiveness is just so different because it's so wrapped up in her different idea and view of how to maintain relationships, what keeps her safe in relationships, what's, what's needed in relationships. And so to be told that her way is wrong, it really can go into that, maybe even her deep-seated belief that she's weak, not powerful enough. And that kind of turning on self is what makes a lot of women get kind of rigid and trying to to make up rules to be per perfect in and so any kind of meeting of that with we're just going to make you better we're going to make you more assertive we're going to make you more masculine is going to feel so hollow to her and and like such an example of why she's failing and why she's all alone in her her more feminine experience of what how life works for her it sounds like she feels he's throwing away her values he's not appreciating her set of values to what you're saying yeah which i know can i'm sure comes across as illogical and makes no sense and and almost like she's stepping on her own foot and to her they make a lot of sense and are are probably very tied into her sense of relationship survival or how she makes it in the world as a, a woman in her her frame. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I've famously said that one of my biggest mistakes was to assume everyone else should have the same set of values that I do. And I wasn't even aware of that before this work. So that sounds similar to what you're saying. Yeah, come on in, please. Hey guys, oh my gosh, this is so such great stuff here. Um, what you just said, Cynthia, that that last soundbite, man, that should be like required for every man to listen to before they get married or into any relationship. It was so good. I'm kind of blown away by that, you know, deep insight into the feminine kind of 
like what's going on in their process when we attempt to fix. I, 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 I'm not sure that, you know, at least for me, it's not about pushing the feminine to be perfect towards perfectionism. It's, it's like, it's like I had this need to help. I want to help. Oh, you have this problem. Let me fix it. And I feel like that's a masculine kind of primal urge to do that. Right. There's a broken spear. Let me help you fix that. Our tribe is hungry. Let's go get some food. This is a primal masculine thing. I, I feel like, and I keep coming back to this kind of pulling the lens back. I mean, we're cavemen really like, oh, let me provide this safe space for you cave woman, so that you can express your frustrations about how, uh, you know, uh, nasty this, this saber tooth tiger meat is, you know, I don't know, you know, like, like, are we getting to a place where we're evolving the, the roles of the masculine and the feminine um, to a place that's not, it goes against our, one thing is goes against our biology. It's, it's, I mean, and a lot of men, this, this theme keeps coming up that men to, create this safe space for a woman to, uh, you know, to, to express herself. And my gosh, so many men just want to fix. And that seems to be the biologically natural reaction. Is that a correct assumption in me saying that most likely? Well, sure. I mean, that's what you would want to yeah. do as a man. That's what you would advise yeah. a man to do is usually when a man complains about something, he's looking for a solution. He wants to take action. Right. And so are we, uh, but with, through this work, I'm not negating the work. I'm just saying, are we trying to evolve now the role of the masculine in the, in, in the space of the feminine to a place that not just individually for us doing this work, but also, I mean, kind of pulling the lens back as, as, uh, as society, you know, uh, it, it just, it seems like we're pushing for a pretty big paradigm shift here. And is that a correct kind of. Yeah, that, that's cool. Observation here. Yeah, that's exactly that's core of what Cynthia and I believe growing what we understand of the masculine and the feminine, the polarized relationship between the two of us. I'm going to show you a graphic here that I've described before. So I'll have Cynthia describe it this time. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I love what you're saying. Almost like the question is this evolutionary psychology? Is this it? Do we ever get to move beyond it? And I think there are, like this graphic says, there's there's different levels of us relating. And that that first level is very much that caveman, cave woman. The second level is that more we're equal, equal. There's really no polarity, masculine and feminine. We we talk the same, we want to ask each other questions the same. And then there's level three, which to me, I feel can be reached when we when we nod our head at hey we're there's still cave woman in my woman and I see that part of her and there's the part of her that wants to be equal equal and we have some of those unpolarized conversations but then we have this whole, whole other arena that we get to dance which is yeah we're evolutionary beings yeah, we're we're both human and we can go to therapy and talk these through, but we're also souls and spirits. And we can play with this cellular biology of who we are in a way that's really fun and exciting and creative and expansive. And to me, that's what kind of divine relationship is about. We don't try to cut off the hand of the caveman, cave woman, but allow it to play with awareness in deep soulful relationship. Yeah, we're moving toward all three of these being involved. So let me add on to that. So what does it take for a woman to be able to access level three? So all of our childhood stuff, our instinctual drives, evolutionary psychology, caveman, cave woman, that's level one. Okay, level two is more modern. We compromise, we talk about things. We're more neutral, like you said. We use our words, nonviolent communication. Okay, mm -hmm. that's level two. And what is what needs to be present? What does a woman need to be doing in her practice and her awareness and her knowledge to be able to access level three, to even go into a level three moment to moment at all? I think that gets down to kind of the core of today that your woman can't go to level three with you if she is constantly has a hand pushing herself down in some of those more basic somatic evolutionary emotional responses that she has. So, 
even though she might be at a level two at work and know all the right things to say or do, she still has this instinctual frustration or pain or grief that's there. That if that doesn't get to come up in the course of the space that men like you create, that the sacred masculine creates where it can have some evolution, it can be seen and known without judgment, then she can't ever get to to level three soulfulness because emotion is so much of that for her and not hiding is so much of that for her. So back at the beginning of the call, you mentioned ways that she can get in her own way. And you also just added there that she needs a man, let's say, to offer the container of level three. Okay. Well, what might what else might hold her back? Or how does a man even know she's capable of this? Or what if he's growing into this level three man mm -hmm. and he wants to invite her into that in small moments, not not for perfection, but in these small moments of presence and open heart and depth? How does he know that she's even capable of that? Mm -hmm. I think this is not the environment where you have to do it all for her. It's little invitations along the way of in the moment, if she's having a, a tough emotion, can she share a little bit of that pain with you, a little bit of that anger? Can you ask her a question like, am I responding to you the way you're needing right now? And can she be gracious and respond back with authenticity those are the little keys and the little doors into that. Sure. Authenticity in, in this moment, right? So I'm going to jump ahead a minute here. Authenticity in this moment, not punishing you for something from the past per se, yeah. but her authentic expression in that moment. What else would you say about that? Yeah, that's something that uh, actually David Data talks about a lot, that the feminine emotional response, if it's all about punishing from the past, that's not level three. If the emotional response is in the moment and it express and then it can find completion, that's that's her real divinity. And I I don't know if any woman's like perfect in that, but that she also has presence and awareness that emotion is not meant to punish herself or you. Emotion is meant to move things forward and express and open. Yeah, so these concepts are what, Cynthia and I teach in our group coaching and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. These are advanced concepts. Real quick, to be a man that can go into level three, you can't be swayed emotionally by what she's going through in this moment. So if you get angry, defensive, resentful, run away, avoidant in the particular moment, then you're retreating into level one caveman and running away or punishing her. So while she's expressing, even if she's punishing you from the past, if you collapse or explode, then that's not a man that can, that you're not staying in level three as a man. You're not offering her safe. Now, how do you lead her? How do you deal with the moment by moment? Those are what we teach in these calls, in our membership group, in our one-on-one -on -one coaching. Anything else that you wanted to add there? Uh, no, I mean, just great stuff. Uh, well, there was one, um, there was a friend recently. Uh, she's older. She was a client of mine years ago. And then we just kind of became friends through the years. And she, she's gone through some stuff over the years. We, we keep in touch every so often. And, um, you know, she's been through a divorce and then re just recently her sister passed and I and I reached out to her and I said hey you need an ear just you know I, I, I'm here if, if you need something so when we talked the other day and uh just naturally some of this work we've been doing come through you know through through friendships and I said to her you know you know how can I support you what can I do for you do you need you know uh just want to talk or do you want my advice or you know you need me to take you out to lunch like what what, what do you need and, and she's, she's older, she's maybe, you know, she's in her fifties. Uh, she's, she was kind of like, she didn't even know how to respond. I don't mm -hmm. think she'd ever had a man offer her that kind of space ever. She, she was just like, Oh, I, I mean, I, I don't know. And then like uh, 10 minutes later, she's like, maybe just, yeah, maybe let's go to lunch. You know, like she, she didn't, she didn't really have any. Uh, so what you're saying was, was, you know, sometimes the feminine he literally doesn't even know what to do because of whether they just never experienced it or, or, you know, they're growing too. They're, you know, I don't know. It was interesting dynamic for sure. Yeah. That's well said. Good job, man. Fantastic. I'm going to press pause on you. So anything else that you want to add there? She didn't even know how to respond. Is that a common thing? Yeah. I'm pausing because that like aches in my heart. I ache because I ache for her, but I feel so grateful that you could just kind of hold the space for that. 
I think that women are grossly underdeveloped in their ability to truly tap into what the more feminine emotional sides of them need, uh, not only in the moment, but long term. And often, just like you did, offering a choice, and it's kind of this maybe even a frozen. I don't know. I'm not trying to fix it myself. I don't know what I actually need or am feeling. Even her just taking 10 minutes to feel into that is very feminine. And so allowing her time to do that, I think is normal, but also women just having, not having any modeling of how that works and this being a brand new experience, kind of what you were saying, this, this is also a brand new world and a brand new way of relating that women have to catch up to yeah exactly come on in please so i have a question i was i grew up with a mother and two sisters well we're we're five children right three three boys and two two girls but my mother and my sister are not a, a typical female not very females right they're not very females well they don't tend to be right so i grew up with that type of female role model, right? Of my mother and my two sisters, right? And I found it interesting now, and you you embody a very, you seem to embody a very, very female person, right? And and in your, this experience that you're sharing every time we are here and re- translating to us the female side of this is, it happens to be very similar to my relationship to my wife, mm-hmm. right? So. My question is, I think I am, the, the the role model that I have and this version of the female side of my wife is kind of different. And I'm, every time I go to my house, to my parents' house, to my sister's, it's like I'm back into the, this female environment where they're more, a little bit more masculine. They work, they have different lives, separate independent lives. Right. And they behave a little bit more masculine. Right. But when I go to my house, to my wife, this is a very different environment. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a, in a challenge. Right. I don't know. I don't I don't know how to separate. Right. This is the first time I've seen it so clear in my in here by watching you express it. Right. Just a minute ago. But how do I divide this view that I have of my mother and my sister's behavior, female behavior versus my very feminine wife. Sure. Well, let me say something quickly. I think all of us have had that experience at work, teachers, people just out in public, women just out in public, right? Well, you usually only have one woman that you're being intimate with. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that's the case for you. Yeah. Okay. Right. So what what about that is difficult? What about that is challenging for you to differentiate between your wife from these other women? I was not used to seeing the the very female side of my wife. The, she behaves like Cynthia behaves all day long, right? And and she talks in this in this emotional world, right? And my family doesn't do it. My mother and my sisters don't do that, right? So it's like it's 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 difficult for me to because I grew up in this environment and, and and I'm living with a person which is very feminine. Sure. And maybe I'm not understanding your question, right? So I had to learn this too. I had to come to calls like this and read books and do this work for myself and being being exposed to different women in relationship. So what what might be your particular question? How do I learn to separate that? To s- and, and and to start understanding more of that female side, right? Because it wasn't, I wasn't brought up with that. Sure. Not, not as, not as, I don't know if, uh, Cynthia, do, I, do you understand my question? Yeah, I, and I, I really appreciate how you're differentiating the differences of energy. And you're so right. right. There's such a spectrum. There's such a spectrum. It makes it really hard you know, I, I, even like when I was a teacher, it's like I couldn't just assume that the men and the teachers and the young students I was interacting with were all going to be the same energy. So it's it's really hard to always know exactly how to tune in. 
I, you're right. I actually, it's you're kid, right. It's about it's about energy. I, that's that's what I was. Yeah. And I'm wondering if one or the other, like maybe, you know, when you see your mom and your sister, maybe there's a little a, a, like relaxation because it's just like palling around. <laughs> we're, just, we're just like guys, you know, <laughs> and then going home to the wife. It's like, oh, to be so much more aware of the emotional world. And I'm wondering if the emotional world of your wife provides some excitement or uplift or fun because it's different it, it does it does definitely it's probably one of the reasons that i married her it's it does she's very feminine yeah it makes it very different than 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 me and and it's exciting it's it's fun i want to learn more about it it's but at the same time it's 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 challenging sometimes yeah because it's welcome welcome to the club welcome to the club <laughs> yeah like you're you're not alone, bro. It's it's different than what I grew up with. Yeah, and it will be. I hope that for every man that's watching this, by the way, I hope that it is very different with your female intimate partner than it is with your family or just women out in public because it will be. She's opening herself in a different way to you than she does anyone else, I hope. And you're opening her in a way that she's never experienced with anyone else, I hope for you. I hope for your relationship. So yeah, it's kind of like, well, how do I learn golf? Because I never learned golf when I grew up. Well, you practice the skills, you read books, you watch videos, you join us here. So I think you're doing the right things. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm gonna press pause anybody. Good stuff. Glad you're here. All right, let's step forward. And those were some, some yeah, buts. We don't have time to get into other, yeah, that's nice, Jeff, but... So I want you to take note of that voice in your head that says, yeah, that's nice. I could say this, but my wife is X, Y, Z, or but my situation is different. Take note of those for yourself. Post them in the forum. Email me. Email us and ask questions if you like. Right? Our website is greatmenmovemountains.com. So greatmenmovemountains.com slash Facebook. Or you can email me, Jeff, at greatmenmovemountains.com and ask these questions. Okay? Yeah, that's nice. But so email or post in the form. A man in the chat said, so when she's blaming you for stuff in the past, how do you hold space and validate what she says or get to that next level? What should a man be saying? Well, that could be a one-on-one -on -one conversation that we have, but let's just go with the statement we have in front of us. Say this right in front of us. So if she brings up a pain from the past again, and you respond as best as you can, I'm sorry for that, or it seems like that's very hurtful for you. It seems like you were really pained by that, or you felt betrayed by that and she keeps hammering you, then say this, tell me the truth. Am I responding in the way you need me to right now? And then shut up and then, you know, and then be quiet, breathe, let her process and see what she says and bring that back to us. Let us know. Okay. The three things that you really need to have for any of these sayings, for this saying in particular, any of these of the say this series that Cynthia and I are going to be teaching Number one is your body. Can you keep your body or reset your body to a calm state? Can you bring your pulse down? Are you breathing deeply into your belly? If you have a sort of triggered reaction, a nervous reaction, which I still do at times, of course, give yourself 10 seconds or 20 seconds to calm yourself down. But you have to have a calm body for opening your woman. You must be in a place that's calm and present in this moment. You're not trying to think of what to say when you're calming your body down. You're not trying to fix it. You're not trying to walk in eggshells. You're not worrying about what happened yesterday or tomorrow. You're calming your nervous system down. That's the first thing. The second thing is what I call kingly vision. So what's the theater in your mind? How are you seeing this scenario play out? Are you seeing this as mommy punishing you? Are you seeing this as, She's just being a nasty bitch to me. So I need to whatever, defend myself or run away or shut her down. Or is this her, let's say she's feeling pain and she's vomiting up a hurt that she doesn't know what to deal with. And you're there as a king of the moment, a king of your family, a leader that isn't taking this personally in the moment where you can check your body, where you can bring yourself to a calm place. Your heart rate is relatively low relatively slow, and you're speaking in a low voice, you're not trying to fix her. And what's the vision in your mind that she's trying to get something out from her soul, she's trying to bring out the layers, as Cynthia was saying, of who she is. So how are you seeing this? What's the point here? And then the soul 
part of this is why do you care to be a man that's calm in his body and present? Why do you care to be a man that sees her in a healthy way, in a positive spin on what's happening, in a way that she's trying to move through a pain, that she's not just being a bitch? So why be this man? Why care to be calm? Why care to have kingly vision in your mind? This is work you have to do on your own. This is a part of your values, the leader you want to be, the masculine depth that you want to have and espouse, the model father that you want to be, to give an example of the relationship for that you would love to have for your children. How are you enacting that? So body, mind, and soul, calm and present. Even, again, even if it takes you 10 or 20 seconds to calm yourself down, do it in the moment. I usually look down, breathe, just give myself 10 seconds to calm myself down, right? What's the vision in my mind? How am I seeing what's going on here? Like, what, what do I think that she's trying to do? Can I just see myself as a conduit for her healing, let's say, or see this moment as it unfolds? And why do I care to be this kind of man? Body, mind, and soul. If you don't have these three things in, a, in any particular moment. So Cynthia, let's go to his why. Let's make it hard. Okay. If he's reactive, if he's emotional, it's just a non-starter. That's, she doesn't feel safe. She feels totally unheard. Yeah. Okay. It's, he's acting out of caveman. If he sees this as, okay, I'm trying to help her heal. But if my why is because I want her to be perfect or because I just want her to stop bitching at me. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing it just for the motions, but I don't, I don't have a deeper why. I don't have an existential perspective of this. It's just to heal her, just to stop this. Mm -hmm. What's going to be going on in the woman's mind? I might say the right things. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm calm. But I really kind of don't care. There's no bigger purpose for the relationship. It's just me trying to get through this. What does oh. that feel like to a woman? Yeah. Gosh, that feels so empty. I felt like the wind was kind of like knocked out of out of me. And she might also feel that as a, in a very intense pressure that somehow she's supposed to respond to in a way that either she might rebel against, push against, get angry about, or collapse under. Why do you think that is? What does it feel hollow? Just speak, I mean, because it is, because he has no future vision. There's no, what, grounding reason. What else would you say? Well, what I was kind of inferring by that is if I was to honor that some of the incredibleness of, of masculine energy is in that ability to fix, to look at there's danger that needs to be changed. It's the energy put in so then that there, there can be peace and resolution and then energy can be saved for the long term stored up for the next survival mode and if if your woman feels like she's being asked to get into a neutral place just so it's less energy and it there's that kind of well now we can coast a little bit until the next harvest that's just gonna be so crumpling to the the feminine part of her that does want to be seen and noticed and have the awareness for and it's and again so she might have a lot of different ways that she responds to that to try to change that up and actually rebel against the preservation of energy yeah <laughs> rebel against trying to be neutralized rebel against just trying to coast or survive yeah yeah because that doesn't feel deep that's not the level three that we were talking about yes yeah good stuff all right guys certainly we would love to dive i know there's some more into the chat here we'd love to engage with you guys on the forum or next time so we will see you next week the same time i appreciate every man for being here and every man that showed up appreciate you guys for being here thanks cynthia thanks see you guys next time